Um, hey, Kayla. Hey. Guess what? What? It's our season finale. Woo! (laughs) Season one (laughs) is over, and this is episode 35. We have done what we started off to do, and we are done with our first season. Yeah. It's so crazy. It's been so much fun, and it's been so much fun getting to know you guys over DM and email and answering your guys' questions. We've been, I've loved it. Yeah, thank you for reaching out, um, providing stories and content and stuff for us to to talk about, and hopefully we've been a blessing to you this season. Um, It it is unique, this episode 35. Uh, Kayla was gracious enough to allow me Mm -hmm. to switch it up a little bit and interview my best friends for the season finale. And so you're going to meet the sisterhood. We are yeah. doing an interview with them. And so Kayla and I wanted to hop on here before the interview started and say thank you so much for being with us. And we can't wait for season two. Yes, I'm excited to hear this episode. <laughs> you will be able to find us around the 1st of September. We don't have a launch date quite yet, but we want to make sure we're pumping out the best content available to you guys. And so uh, stay tuned. If you don't follow us on Instagram, that is where all the latest um, dates and all that stuff will come from. So that is Friendever on Instagram. And then, of course, if you've got off-season questions, you can email us at friendeverpodcast Absolutely. at gmail.com. All righty. All right. We will see you in season two. Welcome to Friendever the Podcast, the weekly podcast where we explore the highs and lows of friendship with your hosts, Danielle and Kayla. As we journey through life, our friendships often evolve and change, ebb and flow, and sometimes even come to an end. Danielle and I are lifelong advocates for the power of friendship, and we are here to guide all of us through the many challenges and joys that come with building and maintaining strong, meaningful connections with those around us. Join us each week as we deep dive into the intricacies of friendship from navigating conflicts to fostering new relationships and everything in between. With insightful interviews, personal anecdotes, and expert advice, Friendever is the perfect podcast for anyone looking to strengthen their bonds with the people they love. So, whether you are on the go, taking care of chores, or just settling in, get ready to explore the world of friendship on Friendever, the podcast. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back to Friendever. My name is Danielle. I am your host for this evening because Kayla is not here, as you heard in our intro. I am here with my fav- most favorite people on the planet, my best friends, and they have agreed to sit down and be a part of our season finale. Our brownie timer is about to go off in one minute, and you're probably going to hear that, but oh, thank you. Um, but for now, we're just going to go ahead and introduce you to the gang if they can get themselves together. <laughs> Okay, Abby cannot. Since you'll be spending the next uh, little while with them, I thought it'd be nice if we went around and introduced ourselves to the Friendever family. If you could tell us what your name is and what do you do? What do you do for a living? Um, my name is Lydia and I'm in recruiting. My name's Abby and I work part-time building auctions online and I just started a event rental business about three months ago yeah they've heard a lot about your business because i've been (laughs) complaining about it a lot because again just to remind everyone i found out about this business on instagram abby did not tell me okay with along with the introductions you've already met her but uh let's let's hear it Uh, hi i'm kara and i'm a law student also other things a law person not a lawyer but a works at a firm Anyways, these are my best friends, and we, I feel so blessed that they have joined me on the podcast. Uh, We have been friends for a little over 10 years. Um, As you guys know, my family moved to California in 2012, and I think that we have a pretty unique story of how we became friends. Would you agree? Yeah. I think that the correct version is quite unique yes the, what do you mean correct version <laughs> me and your version thank you oh. okay thank you i was we're gonna get into that actually let's kick it off with that because that takes us back to the beginning abby and i are the original friends in this friend group yes. amen False. that is ridiculous <laughs> how is that ridiculous? do you have another story yeah let's hear your version i mean it happened no well it was organic yeah organically and then it us was mac and cheese Oh yeah, that was all well. That was us. like that was like pre. That wasn't actually 
Yeah, but that Friendship. gave us foundation. Abigail. Something to reference. When you heard we were moving to California, you said, <laughs> who are those weird people? No, I thought who were those weird people because my mom made me talk to you while she talked to your mom about schooling. Yes. Yeah, so. No, you just you came over to friends. see the show. You didn't even want to meet us. You just wanted I, to see who these people What's actually were. funny, I was thinking about the other day, is I, my mom made me come in, but I was talking to Carly Sargent, and now we you're friends Carly. with Carly Sargent. And that's you guys ditched me to go out of town. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, that's not relevant to the conversation, but I invited Abby, and then she became an entrepreneur. So yeah. she bailed on me. Yeah. That. Let, Long story let, short, me and Danielle became friends through youth. And yes. then one day, real short story, she invited me over to the box, which was the Anderson's old house. <laughs> They don't know about the box. They don't know about the no. box. No, okay. So a very we're, small home. When we first moved to California, <laughs> it was we quite were very blessed to live in a home provided for us, but it was a perfect square, and it was quite small, and so it is affectionately known as <laughs> the box. The box. So we were at some sort of youth thing. It was like Rocktoberfest or something, and Kara hadn't come or had left early. I didn't really know Kara. I knew Kara from Macaroni Night. With Carla, when shout out to Carla. Followed you on Instagram, Not the same but then. As Carly. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Carla Adair, who still makes us all do things together. She stopped asking she's, me. Have you noticed she's... that? <laughs> <laughs> I think I told her no too many times. She made us with Chrislyn. Uh, she made us all come to her house for macaroni and cheese, which we never had all hung up before. Anyway, Kara followed me on Instagram. I followed her. <laughs> then one day, Kara said, I think I'm good, and unfollowed me, and so I promptly unfollowed her, and only followed her back when she had the hat profile picture, but not the black and white one, because that was a different Kara Anderson. Yeah, yeah. She only followed Anyway, with hats. so Danielle invited me over to the box. Brent was it Instagram. just you? I don't... Just me. Okay. I don't, I didn't Your parents you were there, and Kara was there, and we were all sitting together, and that's kind of how it... Did I talk? Pre, so that's pre. our that's our uh, yeah. prequel. <laughs> you asked me what you asked me oh, no. what degrees my parents had and I couldn't remember. And your dad said, <laughs> 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 awesome. I said, I don't know. Your mom has a degree in computer science. She does. She does. I can tell you that. And your dad has an MBA. Lydia, is your mom the IT person? <laughs> she wishes. <laughs> All right, so that, what Abby said, is true, but it's the prequel of events to our original, like, our what we consider our official origin story. Lydia, would you like to tell us a little bit about our official origin story? Well, part of it happened before we were present. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> we got an invite to go to... Was it just the corn maze? Dinner yeah. in the corn maze. <clears throat> dinner in the corn maze. I have no idea where we went to dinner. Applebee's. Was it Applebee's? And then Applebee's? the Applebee's. sign above Applebee's says, we'll see you tomorrow. And we said, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and then Sunday, <laughs> we went back to Applebee's. <laughs> <laughs> and we said, they did it back to you tomorrow. How do you remember I that? I completely forgot about the sign. You have random facts in your memory. But it's true. That did happen. I forgot. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, um, so we went out to dinner, and then we went to the corn maze, and the corn maze was, like, three foot tall. It was it for was, children. It was for babies. So it we was were... my shoulders. Like, I stood literally head and shoulders. Lydia had over trouble it. finding it. <laughs> <laughs> the resident shorty well, in the group. Well, I was trying to use that to my advantage, and I was going to sneak up and scare Danielle. <laughs> and Abby and Karen decided that but they why, would like on. to Why did join. you want to scare me? I have no idea. <laughs> Oh. It turns out my memory's really bad. It is. Because, remember that one time you were at the water fountain in the back, in the by the horseshoe? While you were drinking water, I came up behind you and <laughs> oh, <laughs> grabbed your sides yeah. and went, Rah! and you about knocked your teeth wow. out. While she was getting a drink? <laughs> yes. Oh, I thought that would be funny. It wasn't. Yeah, hilarious. So, anyways. She, I'm jumpy. You are jumpy, but yeah. I didn't really know that at the time. I, I do now. Like, I could go like this and you'd like, fall out of your chair. But, anyways, keep going. So, I was going to scare her, and Abby and Kara decided that they would join but they were clomping, <laughs> and she heard us coming, and so it was foiled. You know so, how the Wizard of Oz on the Yellow Brick Road, when they're, like, walking, but they're, like, dancing, and it's clomping, and they're really loud? Yeah. It was like that, but <laughs> through corn, which is already rustling in really loud. Yeah. yeah. So, we survived the corn maze, and then... Because we, we, we had a group on, remember? We had a group on from Karen Sanderson. Shout out Karen Sanderson! <laughs> which is the most predictable part of this whole story. Yeah. But she didn't know it was for kids. 
she just was like, oh, do something she with said, your friends. She said, oh, my girls don't have any friends. <laughs> I need to put them on a date yeah. <laughs> with some other friends with a group on. But... And so we said, <laughs> Lydia very graciously left out the first part. Yeah, I was, was going to say, <laughs> you got to tell said, the first who part. are some girls you'd like to take? And Danielle and I mentioned these two other girls. A set of sisters. Yeah, we got a thing for sisters. And... <laughs> We could actually and go through and list all those sets of sisters we've hung out with. We could. It's a lot. We it could. is <laughs> nice because it, it remains an even number. We had another Applebee's date with Everyone another set of sisters. Everyone has an ally. With oh, yeah. Them. yeah, BJ's date with another set of sisters. Do we really? Oh, yeah. Um, Macy and Avery. Oh, you're right. How do you remember this stuff? <laughs> okay, turns out you have a steel trap. Where has that been for the last 10 years? Because it's sometimes you just be forgetting useless nonsense. useless knowledge. Yeah. yeah. The anyway. I'll see quotes with the brewers. We should oh, come yeah. up with a list. We should. Oh, if it's sisters. Yeah. Anyhow, uh, my mom asked us, and we said, oh, how about so-and-so? And And she said, okay. So we invited so-and-so, and and then so-and-so canceled. Literally, like, like the day before. Yeah, so then we're like, fine, who's our second choice? (laughs) (laughs) And it was literally like... If it's not us, I'm (laughs) even... It was literally like, we had already paid for the Groupon, it was for four people, and we had had our macaroni date, like... A few weeks a while before. Ago. Had I followed like you before. again yet? Adam? No. It was only after the quarantine. After. You're because I posted a picture with you, fire. and I think you had to re-follow oh, me. Oh, I remember that! Yeah. Yeah, that's a before, terrible picture, that was before, and I still have it. That was before stories even existed. Yeah, you had to post. You had to act just <laughs> random. Like, you had to show your commitment early on. I was deserving on. of an in-feed post. No longer at all. <laughs> no longer. <laughs> all right, so... <laughs> She did not deny. <laughs> no, she didn't. There's a reason that Carla said, are you guys still friends? You never posted anymore. Oh my anymore. gosh. We'll get into that too, but. You should feature Carla on here one day. I should. She's like the. Carla, if you're listening. I don't know what she is. Would you come on the pod? Um, I don't know what she is so we go to the corn maze and I call my mom when we get out. And I was like, mom, the corn is three feet tall. We went through it in like 20 minutes because we could literally see how the maze works. I love how you had to call your mom about like, how do I hang out with these people? <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> but I was like, what What are you doing? And they were going to a play. Because we love hanging out with the Anderson parents. Apparently. We do it more often than I think people would think. <laughs> Sometimes we just sit in the living room That's together. Honestly, fact. they love hanging out with you too. That so it kind of works out. Um, so we call my mom. She's going to a play, Pride and Prejudice. With and friends. With they, friends. They like, made dates with their friends. They already and we had tagged. plans, and we said, hmm, sounds good. Well, I am still new to Sacramento, new to and I am not the oldest person in this friend group. I am the second oldest person, so I'd had my license for less time than the other person. <laughs> Abby is uh, 35. But in <laughs> <you> get it. <laughs> Excuse me. Only, only when people are trying to take up offerings for single people. Oh, oh I, I was 26 on Tuesday night. I'm, I'm just shy, and I, I claimed it. So, um, they had, had made plans with their friends, and we decided we're going to go. So, I am driving, and I'm like, okay, how do we get there? Well, I don't know. All right, let's put it in the GPS. So, we put it in the GPS. And we're going, but we didn't have unlimited data at that time. So, do you want a brownie? Yes. <laughs> Are we pausing? Because I right, have a funny take... joke. I want to tell oh, Kara. Say your, say your joke. No, I can't. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> we'll this brownie. is what I was freaking out about. It's okay. break. We're in the middle of a story, but we're going to take a quick a joke and brownie break. J- brownie and apparently private joke break. We'll be right back. <laughs> okay, we got our brownies, and now back to our story. See. It was a good joke, too. My memory's bad. I don't remember no, where we were. No, you can keep eating your brownie. Oh. You don't have to wait. <laughs> the people can hear us eat our brownies. Anyways, so we go to drive to the place, but it's in downtown Sac or like Midtown or something. But your girl grew up in cornfields. I don't know about- How tall was the corn in those cornfields? That, that, that corn was like eight feet tall. Mm-hmm. This was like three feet tall. So- I'm behind the wheel, I'm driving on the freeway, I'm driving on city streets, and I don't know where to go. We did not have unlimited data, and so I was like, oh, this native Sacramentan. I feel like we had. I think you did too. We did. Maybe you're stingy. I think you did too. You're like, I'd rather you get lost than die. I had an Android, and I don't know. Oh! (laughs) 
<laughs> it's a wonder we I don't know if I had like it a is. good maps. That's right. Or maybe that was the she technology. She had a flip phone at some point during but the French But she wouldn't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> at Arco. That was, that was brief. It was, uh, but you know what? It still was here. She would <laughs> not. T- this is how low. This is how low her opinion is of me. She would not take out her phone during that window of time because she thought I would make fun of her. <laughs> was I right? You did. <laughs> no, I didn't know until after. Make fun of her for having a flip phone. Yeah, we knew that she had a flip phone. No, she had a flip phone. No, we didn't. Oh, I saw that firsthand, and I said, "What is that?" Okay, so it was Kara. You should have been worried about, not me. Anyways, was my phone broken? Yeah, yeah. You broke it, but then I think you got an iPhone right after, didn't you? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Not before she was humbled. <laughs> I forgot about the phone until just now. Man. You need <laughs> you know. to go back in the archives and take a peek because, yeah. So I'm driving, driving, driving. They had data. They wouldn't share it. And I'm suddenly in a part of town that is uncomely, apparently. I recognized it. Yeah. <laughs> a little but a little late. too late. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm driving and I'm like, this doesn't seem like... <laughs> This is not H and 13th or wherever we needed to was go. Was it the 4th 10th that gave you a clue? I was no, like, it was no, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Please, let's take an interruption from her story and go Dude, ahead and tell them that. we can't keep interrupting ourselves. I, all I have to say is Abby paints me as the villain in this friendship for unfollowing her and whatever. I may be the villain, but Abby's the weird one. <laughs> So I was 13 because I'm was young. Older. She was older. Oh, okay, at least she's old. Were you 16? No, she was like 15. You're like 15. 15. Okay. Because this was early Call on. Even. So I was right. 14, therefore I was the ugliest I've ever been. <laughs> it's a little too soon to be bringing up that depth. <laughs> anyway, I was minding my own business, going through puberty, and oh Abby voluntarily, nay rebelliously, like insistently, <laughs> uh, slept in a tent in her own backyard of her own perfectly good, warm, comfortable home. Which is not a yard. It's like cobblestone or brick or something. <laughs> yeah, there's no grass. There's a big old pool that she could have rolled into. Uh-huh. Uh, we and had there's a brick at the time. Mm. Did you have the cats? Were they out there sleeping with you? Maxine? Bianca. Uh, right next to those things were Bianca's yeah. grave. Yeah, okay, so they had some outside cats that kind of scared me. R.I.P. Um, anyway, they she, she <laughs> chose to sleep outside in this tent for like two months. No, it was like six months. I appreciate The you. only <laughs> reason I moved inside is because, <laughs> it, number one, it got a little chilly. We were entering the colder months. And my grandma bought me a new comforter, I think, to make me come inside. My grandma <laughs> knew I was sleeping, living in a tent. <laughs> My grandma, actively choosing to sleep in a tent in her own back- backyard. Mind you, at this time, I, I had Cupcake, my dog, and she R. ruled R. my room at oh. that time because it was her room because I slept in a tent. Oh. So anyway, my grandma that. got me my comforter and it made me move inside because it was getting a little cold. And then when I moved out of the tent, I discovered that I had been sleeping with a dead bird inside the tent. <laughs> Really? Yeah. It has uh, this is just and turned oh, into a animal. podcast called Abby's Confessions. <laughs> Stay tuned for a future episode of Abby's Confessions. I love sleeping in a tent, though, but my dad made me put... Um, we are moving way <laughs> too he quickly He made me put this little lock thing inside in case, you know, someone oh. tried to kill me. You, Dan. We just moved exactly. way too quickly past the fact that you just said you slept in a tent I do with a dead she, bird. She said she'd do it again! <laughs> Come on, Lola, we're going to the tent. <laughs> A dead bird? Yeah. My dad found it because I refused to clean up my own <laughs> <laughs> So he had to throw away the mattress that I had put in there. You guys, and he we found have a bird. dark origins in this friend group. <laughs> wow. So we're driving. Yeah. That's and whatever we come on a, a, a street that has several, several tents. Not of Abby's bird quality. <laughs> this was, this was a, yeah, oh, oh really. <laughs> Yeah, I'm offended. <laughs> and there are several um, people, and Lydia starts hooting and hollering. Who? We're in the homeless district. We're in the homeless district. And I had had it. I could not find this place. And I pull over on the side of the curb and I throw it in park. And I said, "Fine, you drive since you know where you're going." <laughs> Does not. <laughs> she didn't know where she was going when she knew where she didn't want to be. Um, can I just say, Lydia 
panicked and screamed that we were in the homeless district. <laughs> Me and my little old pea brain. We're from, I'm from Michigan. Michigan. We I don't said, know what that is. There's a district for the whole world. <laughs> like, I, I thought this was like a zoned city, like a neighborhood. <laughs> you know, like Midtown, Downtown, a homeless district. So anyway, that was Lydia. East Sac, introducing me to Sacramento. And homeless district. Mm-hmm. Well, Lydia refused to drive. I only drive my own car. She only drives her own car. And Abby doesn't let anybody drive her car. No. Even to Yellowstone, I offered to drive to help her, and she Abby said, Abby nah. drove me from Sacramento to Houston and back. Not as a favor. <laughs> that sounds like I was, I was your chauffeur to Texas and back. Well, you did, and I volunteered to help her, and she said no every time. Just I didn't so. need your assistance. Yep. We Strong, made it. Independent woman. We made it. Uh-huh. We Anyways, it. can we just get to this ever. origin story first <laughs> and then story. we can move on? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to really quickly go through this so they don't interrupt. So, Lydia refuses to drive. I'm like, well, I still don't know where we're going. I start driving again. We go and go and go. I'm finally on the right street. I get onto G Street. And I was like, oh, thank God. This is the street that the theater is on. So, I find a parking Stop space there. in downtown Sacramento. And I was like, look at God. <laughs> Look at God providing this parking space for us. So mm-hmm. I parallel park like a boss. Mm-hmm. And we get out and I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. we found a parking space. Look up at the cross street. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Abigail to Amen Corner. We are eight blocks from the theater. <laughs> That's so threatening. Abby is waving her fork at me and I don't know why. We are eight blocks from the theater and the four of us at like... <laughs> What? What they are you both doing? whipped out their phones. For what? To take a you're photo of you. Of you. I mean, you have a hand it's on so one hand and you're waving your phone. You look like face. a man at a saloon. Like, what are you doing? Hmm. Right, right, continue. continue. We walked to eight blocks <laughs> and we get to Pride and Prejudice, buy our tickets with our f- so little money that we had back then. Oh, and still do. <laughs> and. Got a ride back with my parents yeah, to so, the house, so, <laughs> to the car. So, their parents are like, these doofuses are stupid. <laughs> and so, at that, that was my mom's time, idea. they were in like this black minivan. And Brett was with them. He was probably put out because we stuffed him into the trunk. And you guys so that we like, could all fit in. Christmas, yeah. Yeah. And, and then they had to like, drive us the chairs, eight blocks back. The chairs are like folded over. But you know. He was absolutely put out. I think of this story every time I park somewhere, Daniel goes, there was a spot closer. <laughs> because I have never parked just a block away from somewhere in my life. That'll preach. It happened oh, man. one time, and you actively choose to park 82 miles away from where we're ever going. I try to park as close I as possible. To park in fact, on Saturday, or yes, yeah, Saturday, I went and picked her up at the curb at Tell Golfer and Lydia. She was a gentleman. <laughs> we, technically, we met you halfway, but whatever. So... They drive back off at the house, or at the car. We're driving back. We get to laughing about the night's events, and... Oh, I forgot about this part. One of us nearly has an accidente in the car, who shall remain nameless. Sure. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> it this wasn't me Abby, either. By the way. It wasn't me either. It wasn't yeah. Abby, it wasn't Danielle, if and it wasn't You can remember Jared. the intro, otherwise rewind to figure out who's not talking. <laughs> And so she gets, we get back to the box. Yeah. And she goes tearing up the path to go into the house. And that was the close of our fretting. I made it. She did make it. (laughs) Our friend wedding. Um, That was a very eventful evening. I I do not remember the Applebee's, but I remember the going back. Next next day. Is that not my fault? But the the moral of the story is not is really. Moral? But <laughs> the next day we had had such a good time together because their mother had us all hang out and we went out to uh, dinner after yeah. church the next day. And now we've spent. And now it's too much. How now much we spent? now we have all eaten individually, not collectively. Twelve thousand extra. <laughs> yeah, we've spent a like. We would be millionaires right now if we had invested that much money. Mm-hmm. But you know what? Well, but we wouldn't have the memories. We wouldn't have the memories. <laughs> or the rolls. Or the fat rolls or the bread rolls. <laughs> that we do. I'm horrific. <laughs> oh, good times. 
now that you have our origins and you've met us and you've had a proper introduction to who we are, the clowns that we are, even though we try to hide that, mm. we are letting it all hang out on the podcast. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about what it means to be a good friend, what it takes to build a strong friendship. Um, we've never, we've not always gotten it right. And I wouldn't say that there's any one expert or professional person on friendship because it just ebbs and flows and it takes work. But Abby, can we start with you? What do you think it takes to build a strong lasting friendship? Um, <clears throat> so I am not a good communicator as has been said in previous episodes about me from the <laughs> leader of Friendever. <laughs> Kayla said that about you? <laughs> no, Kayla has said nothing bad about me. Um, I am not a good communicator in anything. I, I, I got my own thing. I'm going to do my own thing. Um, but I would say that I would hope that my friends would know that I have their backs, even if I don't tell them. I don't tell my friends I love them every day or every week or every month. That's not me. <laughs> or every <laughs> 10 years. Um, <laughs> Lydia, Lydia struggles with that a little bit. Um, <laughs> it's eking out of her eyes. But what's, uh, so I think Danielle a couple weeks ago uh, on the podcast was talking about the five love languages mm -hmm. um and i redid the quiz um actually before she talked about that because i use my number one used to be quality time but then when i redid it my number one became acts of service of how oh. i show love and i think that's how i feel love correct mm -hmm. yeah um not necessarily but if that's like what how you interpret it then it can be yeah that's how i interpret it standard in a standard way it is give and receive in the same way so my my way of showing love and is to hopefully do things for my friends that isn't asked of me. Um, you drove me to Texas. I drove Kara to Texas. And she didn't even have to ask you. <laughs> um, but things like um, like I did a brunch two years ago. Um, we were just talking about that. I know. Um, that's kind of the way Lydia was in Lebanon. I was lonely. And I wanted to do something for, like, people that were close to me at that time. Um, and I kind of did that as an act of service <clears throat> to how I show love. And then um, that's just kind of the way I do it. When my friend got married last year, it's just kind of how I showed her. I didn't tell her that I loved her. That's just not what I do. But I try to show in different ways that, um, you know, I care about them and stuff. But... I think a friendship probably should use some communication. Um, and I am rambling because I didn't want to go first. <laughs> okay, okay, I want to say, though, I feel like that came out, the love language thing came out in how you started Bloom, which is her business that she was talking about. Because, I don't know, maybe I'm manufacturing this, but I thought that your, like, the brunches that you hosted and the stuff that you did for your friend who got married last year, like, parties and stuff was a very natural progression toward being in hospitality as a career. Yeah. And it totally suits your personality and the way that you serve others and show love, which I think is very cool that you can professionalize that and monetize it too. So it's not limited, I don't think, to like you. And, uh, you know, maybe if you went to your client and said, I love you, that'd be a little weird anyway. <laughs> so. Well, and you're good at it. Like, not only through your love language did you discover something that you could do for your friends, but if, like Kara said. A talent. A talent that you can, you know, take into yeah. more aspects of your life, which I think is amazing. Have you ever seen how I can shove this pair of tongs up my nose? Okay, Wooten. <laughs> That's Wooten's talent. The Odyssey references are back. If you listen to Kara's first episode, there was, what, like 85 of them? Now there's going to be 190, but anyways, I, I love that. I, I totally agree. I think acts of service, or excuse me, love languages play a huge role in it, um, and communication is definitely a big aspect of it. I just remember how in the early days of the group chat, we would be talking for like an hour, the three of us, and then Abby would just chime in with like a thumbs up every now and then. She was always there, and she was reading them all, but bless God, she was not going to reply. And now that we have chat backs, it really works out oh, for me. Oh, good Lord. Anyway, but you're about to hear a much better answer from either Kara or, <laughs> or uh, Lydia, whatever her name is. 
her sister. <laughs> My sister. All right, Lydia, making a strong friendship, building a connection. What do you think? How, how do you do that? I think it changes um, in the length of friendship and what you want to invest into the friendship. Um, so spending time with the people to find out the people that you want to invest that time into, I think is incredibly important. Um, because when you spend time with people, you get to know people who they really are. And then you're able to learn who you can be vulnerable with. Um, much like Abby's communication, <laughs> I am not super vulnerable with people um, until I know that I can trust them. And so really spending the time with people and then learning that it's not comfortable, but in order to actually have real connection, you have to be vulnerable and you have to let people in and you have to be there in the good and the bad um, and just be consistent with that. And yeah. Is there, was there, is there a certain marker or defining moment that you realized that you had that in us? I don't think it was like a certain moment, but it was a, I've confided things in these people and they didn't use it against me. They didn't make fun of me for it they you know and it doesn't even have to be big things it, you know it's just the little things in life um and I learned that it, you were people that I could trust and so I and then that, that evolves now I don't have to continually you know go through that process with you guys and we're able to invest other things yeah. into that relationship that's really good I think that was so well put and more succinctly said, more effectively said, than our entire episode on why trust Amen. matters. <laughs> I, didn't you were to, I didn't. I cut her off. I'm like someone that might cut you off at an amen before you finish your statement. Now I'm so, so sorry, Kayla. I am so offended. Right now. I was saying better than mine is I thought she were or the she whole episode. I thought with communication. I okay okay. <laughs> I thought Danielle was saying the whole, it was better than the entire, our episode so far. And I said, amen. But then she said, trust. And I said, oh no. I retract my amen. Oh, okay. That is classic sisterhood right there. All right, Kara. Um, investing in a friendship, building it, growing it. What, what do you think? Um, I think Abby and Lydia stole a lot of the good answers. So that's kind of rude. But, um, Again, I, would, like, <laughs> I think I would build on what Lydia was saying, um, focusing on like the vulnerability side of things, because I found in a lot of like surface level friendships that I have with people at church who I like and, you know, we're friendly, but unless it's a, a two way thing and like you both want to be good friends, you can't force it like you can't start like spilling your guts to them and then you know expect them to to be careful with it or to reciprocate so all that to say i think a big part of it is like as cliche as it sounds like intention and like kind of knowing that you're looking especially you know as you get older and it's quality over quantity and you yeah. want a few really good friends and you don't need a bunch of big squad i'm not trying to have big squad um then you just have to like know who the kind of jewels are in the options that you have and if it's not if like your service level friendships aren't really going anywhere then you can totally be friendly with them but not not over investing in things that aren't worth the investment and and on the flip side of that investing in those friendships that you see have a lot of depth and potential to them and like prioritizing people i'm we're all super busy i'm really busy i work multiple jobs and I'm in school but like you have to to keep commitments and like make time for people and get dinner and hang out and I mean you agreed to do this and you're in one of the busiest seasons you've ever been in mm -hmm. your entire life so which I very much appreciate all of you guys doing I this too, girl. but <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah anyway. I wish this was a video podcast so you could see what I just did <laughs> Um, Always forever. <laughs> you just have to, to invest your time and your attention and your trust into a relationship. And uh, I think it's easier when you live right by them. I have a really good friend who lives far away. But we have history right. that we're building on. So for, for the sisterhood to have become friends in our teen years, um, I think a lot of, of that, what enabled us to invest that time and 
attention and all that was because we live like one second from each other and especially early on we would be together multiple nights a week not yeah. that you have to do this but it's just over time it's, yeah. it's natural where you really develop this camaraderie and com kind of commitment that sounds kind of weird yeah. but like trust and stability in the friendship and as far as um spacing goes like physical spacing we have interestingly enough inched closer to them as the years got on, yeah. <laughs> every three years we get a mile closer. This is true. And before pretty long, we're going to be living in the tent in the backyard with a dead bird. <laughs> but um, I know I'm the one who set up the question, but guess who's also going to answer it? <laughs> me. To me, it's been, and Kara just mentioned it, so I'm just going to riff off what she said, but it's been that shared experience. When you hear about the term, like, invest time, you usually think of, like, I'm doing the boring stuff now to invest, you know, for a greater return in the future. I'm, I'm putting in a thousand dollars a month now into an investment account that'll hopefully grow to half a million by the time I'm 50 or whatever. And you're like, it's, it seems like an investment is something that you're losing right now. But for us, the shared experience when we were teenagers to me is absolutely irreplaceable. It cannot be replaced. Like there's nothing in my life that matches what we did when we were teenagers. And I know a lot of people say like, oh, the glory days or whatever. I am so grateful, genuinely, like deeply grateful that these two people came with these two people and all of us wanted to be together. It wasn't like a FOMO thing. It wasn't like a, oh, they're the new girl, so I'll be nice to them. It, it wasn't that. It was... We genuinely wanted to be together. We genuinely wanted to spend nights in a row and weekend after weekend together. And I feel like we're reaping the reward of that now. And we will continue to for the rest of our lives. So don't think of investing in a friendship as, okay, I'm going to need someone to watch my kids when I get older. So I guess I'll be friends with them now. <laughs> That's not what this is. Abby, I'm going to hit you up. <laughs> you should not trust me. <laughs> dead bird is going to be in the freezer. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I don't know what you guys think, but to me that was, I, I think it was just as much of a God thing as it was our own desires because he knew what I needed. Can I say something about the dynamic too? Like, you, you touched on it earlier. I think we have a benefit in that we're two sets of sisters. I agree. There's like, there's a protection there and a stability that even when you're kind of in the early days, we're making this sound like a romantic relationship. It's not, I promise you. <laughs> no, it's, relationships are, uh, any type of relationships to a certain extent follows a similar pattern. Yeah. Um, so like when, what Lydia was talking about, like when you're kind of testing out the whole vulnerability thing, I think we had the advantage of one third of the rest of the people in this group to each member is your blood and it's your only sister so you already have that kind of safeguard built in. Yeah. Not, I'm not, if you don't have a sister and you don't have sister friends, that's that's fine. I'm not saying you need to go manufacture it. But I do think that's something unique about our dynamic that really helped solidify. And like, if one person was gone, it it just didn't. It doesn't fall apart as easily. There's there's more bonds than just the friendship. There's also family and yeah. church and yeah. and ministry and serving together and all kinds of other stuff. Yeah, that's an interesting aspect, like she said. So, like, the name The Sisterhood is obviously, you know, a joke. We don't literally go around and, like, The Sisterhood, you know, we don't... We do have Christmas cards. We do. <laughs> so, I guess we do take ourselves a little too seriously. To some <laughs> but our point is, is that um, the sisterhood bond of me and Kara and Abby and Lydia is so much present in this friend group. But also, Lydia and I are the older friends, you know, and so we have certain experiences that are, we call it the horizontals. Um, the two older and the two younger and sometimes she and I will be on the same page about something and those two clowns will be on the same page about something and they're wrong and we're right and so <laughs> we'll be like oh the horizontals are active today or something but what we mean is like because it's not she and Abby who are so much older than us but there's so many like it's kind of like um, the grooves and the clock like they're all connected in some way I feel like our friendship has got so all right, so throughout the last, uh, going on 11 years, our lives have taken different paths to some extent, and I personally am so grateful that we are all back in EG right now, because it, it tends to ebb and flow, <laughs> but there's nothing like when we're all together. So anyways, 
Uh, I talked about this a couple weeks ago with Kayla, how there was a season that Abby was in Roatan for a year. There was a season that Kara was in college. There was a season that Lydia was in Lebanon. There was a season that Kara was in Norway. And they've all kind of scattered across the globe. And I've been the only one who stayed here. And that does make me the glue of this franchise. Absolutely not. No, 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 no,
I don't know if Kara had a car to herself. No, I was a late bloomer in the driving department. <laughs> yes. So then when she came for about she a week. She always had us to do it, so she didn't need to. Still. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she came I have free parking downtown. <laughs> if you want to go to the Golden One event, figure out an event you like to go to, even graduation, and Kara can get you I covered. I got you. Um, and I think we kind of took a turn at that point in our mm-hmm. friendship for the better. Mm-hmm. Um of just getting closer and yeah. actually the two of us being friends instead of just being with our older sisters. Yeah. Um, so that definitely um, was a big shift. And then in uh, uh, July when I came back, yeah, um, definitely when I came back, I, I loved being with them more because I didn't have them. I didn't have true friends. I had friends but a very different dynamic when you're home um and kind of just showed that you know you can't always be an island <laughs> mm, <laughs> literally on an island one. but you can't always be an island and if if anyone's like me which not many people are i don't think <laughs> um, sometimes you think <laughs> that you can do everything on your own mm-hmm. and you don't really need people not like in like a i'm so much better than everyone but like you feel like you can do everything yourself and you don't need to do anything with anyone um definitely was a moment that i think um kind of changed that is a classic abby move and i've been (laughs) dragging her to spending time with me ever since yeah i think you pointed to something that's changed over time we apart from you guys with your false narrative about (laughs) You, Abby, and Danielle. That is that false. You know it's true. You know it's true. I don't remember. I don't really care. Anyway, Mm -hmm. apart from that, we have, um, probably for like the first half, if you want to quantify it, because we've been friends for uh, almost 11 years now, probably like the first half, we were a a group of four only. And like, Abby and I were, were friends. Lydia and I, I mean, we were friends, but we, we talk about this sometimes, back when we were doing our first Christmas parties, we didn't even get gifts for, like, the, mm-hmm. the quote-unquote opposite friend. So, like, that's Lydia to me and Abby to Danielle, because it's not the parallel age friend. Because that's kind of what we thought this was at yeah. the beginning. We thought it was just well, two pairs. Our age difference at that time was, like, drastic. That's it true. meant yeah. more than, we were, yeah. I mean, I was entering adulthood and you were like just barely that was early teens teen. yeah, yeah yeah but i think over time <clears throat> our individual friendships have developed really really significantly and now everyone is a, a very close friend of mine in their own way and there's like different dynamics to each of the relationships which i think has been really cool um kind of like a complexity that's come with it and there's certain things things that i seek i guess and each of my friendships and just things that i kind of associate people with and I don't know it's just it's a, a it's a blessing to have that kind of like maturity over time yeah I will say the Roatan thing in particular Abby and I bonded the last night over <laughs> an odyssey do called diet. Doer Diet <laughs> that we had both heard hundreds of times but we were delirious and also the fact that like Abby had this little apartment and I had no clue what I was doing. I was trying to be a house guest but I was not competent. And I asked her if she had a washcloth. She made me dinner one night. I well yeah, okay. We'll get in that. I asked her if she had a washcloth and she said no, so then I just helped myself to the hand towel. I don't know why. And then she didn't have another hand towel. So I soaked this hand towel and then she being herself didn't say anything. She the whole being an island thing is very accurate for her and she won't say anything if she is uncomfortable, like she won't complain. But in retrospect, I'm like, wow, what an idiot. And, and well, I should have got was, and bought some washcloths for you. Okay. On and, an and, island, you think there were just washcloths <laughs> floating by? So, Abby asked Cut some towels me, up. I remember this is like a nightmare memory. Oh and we've never talked about it, so. Oh, you know, oh no. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> Microphone, we're going to talk about it. Is make, this in quote, Rotan? Yeah. Quote unquote, making you dinner. It was gross. I made this, this like little pasta that was not good. And we had grapes with it. Yeah. And I knew about the water situation in Roatan and how you can't drink tap water. And so I was like, Abby, should I do um, tap water or or the filtered water? And she she said something like, oh, that's fine. And I didn't know what that was referring to, <laughs> oh, no. if it was filter or tap. So I did the tap water. Never tap water. We did the tap water. <laughs> and mind you, I mean, I was like... I was 18 years old, so I mean, old enough to know better, but also relatively young. I go over there, being a little, you know, 
homemaker. And I, uh, I was rinsing the grapes in the tap water and I saw Abby kind of looking at me strangely but she wouldn't say anything. And I'm here to testify Did that now in 2024 she ate like two and then she pushed them away. Now these days she would have told me to rinse the stinking grapes. But back then she didn't tell me. So that that is the growth of our friendship and that now she would actually say it. Wow. Do we let her get a parasite? Did you get a parasite though? I did not, but I. You know, the I Lord probably was watching over you. He's like, you know, <laughs> yeah, you care girl. Yeah. I'm sure we blessed the food. I, we did for. I mean, that food couldn't be much blessed. But, <laughs> and, but and then you also made a cake for the church when we re, we would take dessert sometimes, and you took a like a what's it called Texas. Oh, a Texas sheet cake. Texas sheet cake, but yes. Sugar. yes. And here I am making brownies that are also nothing but sugar. Anyway, that was a very long-winded answer. No, I like it. A question it. that I was not asked. Because it shows the growth and the development of the friendship. Um, when you, Lydia, were abroad, you were in a unique position to be with other girls around your age. So while you didn't have us, you did have other friendships. But what was it like to not have your leeches during that time? <laughs> I have never referred to you as a leech. No, you haven't. No, but. you're much sweeter. Um... <laughs> Man, <so> sweet. <laughs> I mean it's definitely different because we were um coming together for a purpose and we all knew it wasn't a long term situation. Um so you develop which I mean I have I'm still friends with them. Um but it was a different bringing together. Um like and a so survival like you're all in the same boat kind of thing. Well we were fighting together for the same cause right um so it brought us together in different ways because we had shared purpose which i mean we as the sisterhood have shared purpose but it's not the same right um and we were you know spending every day all day together so that's definitely different but um missing out on the sisterhood was definitely difficult because life goes on even though you're not here. Mm. So and that's the truth. Through <laughs> the beautiful. glass darkly of social media, you can, you're can you so close yet so far. Yeah. yeah. So but you, we did, I mean, we tried. I, it probably was not the greatest because the time difference was horrendous. We tried a book club for a while. We did. And I would get up on early on Saturday. That. Well, yeah, but I was so tired. Early on Sunday, wasn't it, when you were getting No, up? I was getting up early on Saturday. Oh, you guys would right. do it after Friday, Friday night. night. Yeah. yeah. Um. And so different ways, but definitely seeing Instagram or we have a shared folder with pictures and seeing everything that's happening and knowing you're missing out, but then coming home and you just pick up where you left off. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. That for me, and obviously I'm not the one who has been leaving, who's less, who's, who has left, but when you guys would come home, not so much Kara because when she was away for college, it was like she'd come home every couple weeks, but when you came home from Row 10 or you came home from Lebanon, that first day when you guys were back was like, <sighs> but then those two weeks would go by and it was like, it, it was just as, it was worse almost than when you left the first time because it's like, I remember three weeks ago what it was like when you weren't here and now we're going right back to that. And so it was really hard. I mean, it had nothing to do with me. Like it wasn't about me, but it was difficult to transition back into that far away relationship because I needed you guys just as much as we all need each other and so being in the position where I was the one who was here again usually it was three of us who were here at the same time it was just so difficult um to transition back into that far away relationship but then you always had the joys of when they were going to come home so that's something uh we did do the book club which honestly you guys I would be willing to bring that back <laughs> <laughs> Abby doesn't read. Pick a different <laughs> Audio books are the life. I did listen to that book on Audible, and uh, let's pick a different book. <laughs> we were trying to subject matter. That we were trying to like learn and be studious, and it was. Did it was it work? hard to face. It didn't work. It did not. <laughs> no, it did not work. It but it was just work. hard to FaceTime without purpose. Yeah, you know because no, that's true. we needed something to make us get on FaceTime every single yeah. week. Mm -hmm. Because um, even when, like, you're catching up, if we asked her about her life, like, we still don't know the people she's talking about or her experiences. Like, we 
it was just different. Well, and the three together, it doesn't matter which three are just clowns. Yeah. And the other one's just sitting there watching them that be clowns. That is true. And you know what? <laughs> when you guys were in Rotan, or was it they were in there Rotan? There was a time you guys had a guitar and you were staring oh, at me. I, I was writing my thesis when I was in yes. my senior year of college. Is that I what I had? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I was wearing a sombrero, Danielle was playing the guitar, sure. and I was... <laughs> cat typing GIF on my thesis at like 3 a.m. That was, we have never had a drop of alcohol in our lives. <laughs> never. But that was like the, that's Couldn't what I tell. feel like it was probably like to be drunk, I would imagine, is that night. We, is that the night we watched Delirious. the VeggieTales? We were VeggieTales. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Yes. Yeah. We've had a lot of probably below our age. Uh, <laughs> Fun times, but she's right. When you're the one who's on the FaceTime and the other three are just living life, it's really hard. But there was one time that two were in Rotan and two were here, and it wasn't the three and one clowns, but it was one in the States and one in Rotan. And I think you were here. It was me and you, me and Kara, and then Abby and Lydia were in Rotan, and Abby and Kara were just like back and forth, and Lydia and I are just sitting there That's like, we would like to talk to, please. Yeah. <laughs> show. Yeah, because you were showing us the, the video of my in Spanish not good. Yeah, and there was also the video of with the fish, fish falling from yeah. the sky. Yeah. Isn't that that oh, video? Oh, the same yeah. yeah. Yes. Where did it fish range the fish? fall from the sky on the mainland. And you may think I'm crazy, but I'm not. Google it. Should we put you it in are, the show notes? just not about sure. that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try to find the video and put it in the show notes so you can see the, the fish raining. Alright, so in the next segment of our little sisterhood uh interview hangout sesh um do you guys remember the timeline mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that I mean, was lydia's yeah. own creation it was i need to give a huge shout out to her right now Woo! lydia in i don't know what year it was 2019 it was right before we went to lebanon for the first time really yeah so it was in anticipation of a splat so oh actually it was or was it when abby was i think rotan. it was because the first iteration is 13 to 18 and then we have okay. a 19. Yeah, yeah. Been... Okay. okay, side note about that, though. Regardless of which splat it was, it was an anticipation of a splat, right? Yeah. So that's, we kind of glossed over that earlier. We have had panics <laughs> in our history. To we like, went to... Yes. <laughs> yes. We went to Ruth's Chris that's and tried to spend send four yeah. <laughs> gift cards at that restaurant. Oh, they did not. They dropped my lobster thing. on the they ground. They dropped her lobster on the ground. The waitress tried to be our friend, which side note, which is a side note of a side note. Yeah. Every waitress in Sacramento has tried to befriend us at one point. Yeah. So there's that. They kind of stopped. They have. Are we not friendable anymore? I think we're too loud. <laughs> <laughs> Case <laughs> right. Anyways, um, yes, preparation for the splat. Uh, we've all kind of thought it was going to come at one point because we're like, you know, this is it. Like, we're all going to transition. Yeah, there's like a red scare, like, every three years. <laughs> I am dead. Especially if you're going to Lebanon. <laughs> <laughs> one was particularly egregious but that takes work yeah i will say True that, that doesn't come just True that. yeah so the first one abby was the first one to leave and um i my thought process was okay abby's gonna leave and then kara's gonna go to college and we'll never be back together for the foreseeable future that was my thought i don't know if you guys thought the same mm -hmm. thing yeah. probably okay so lydia thought the same thing and she incredibly put together and if you have the copy of the 52 Friend Dates, this is actually a recommendation in the book. Put together a timeline of our friendship spanning uh, text messages and photos and just events from what we were together, whatever, and piece together from 2013 to 2018. How long did you work on that? It was weeks. I and think Abby must have been in Rotan because I feel like I had nothing else to do. <laughs> and she kept yeah, yeah. that a secret and then presented it to us and I... If I didn't tear up, I, I never to. had access to the doc. <laughs> yes, I did. You commented on it before. Why do you say Google that? Google doesn't work. Am I on there? Yeah, you're on here. Oh. <laughs> um, no, your communication not good. <laughs> Anyways, Lydia just put this masterpiece together, and going through it is like literally opening up a time capsule of our friendship. It has petered out a little bit in the last couple of years, but I trust that. I've made some documentaries. Yes, you have. Oh, you have yeah. making videos. But actual documents. Anyways, 
No, that being said, the end of the year videos. Yeah. Oh, the she has video. made actual videos. I was, yeah. I was. Yeah. Those were extremely. I thought awesome. she misspoke, but she <laughs> has actually made documentaries. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. easier than typing, typing out every day. Yeah. <laughs> She's the sisterhood uh, historian. Secretary. Yeah. Slash secretary. She also I'm keeps retired. notes. <laughs> <laughs> you have the the quotes note. I do. If we, which we crack That's ourselves unhinged, up though. much. Oh no, yeah, that, that is confidential. <laughs> but we crack ourselves up. Far more than anyone else cracks us up. You know Far that most. More. You know that most recent quote that we can't put on air, but that from Sunday. Yes. I told my parents that the other day. And they Verbatim. Died laughing. And Kim Horton. <laughs> they thought it was hilarious. Her, yeah. Anyway, we we Someone can chat our own jokes because we think we're hilarious. If I look at me. Right. <laughs> the way that we're <laughs> the way that we're miming this whole thing. Hold on, I gotta pause so I can tell Abby the quote. Hold on. <laughs> Okay. Oh, <laughs> she remembers now. Okay, <laughs> this is an extremely long way to say, what do you guys think about if we pull up the f- old document, you give me a date, and we'll read what we were doing at that time. And if we don't have that exact date, I'll pick the closest one to it. You good? Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. We. Oui. Lydia, I'll start with you. Give me a date. Oh, goodness. I have the 13 um, to 18 in front of me, but I can open up the other one. Let's go to July... 15th, 2016. Okay, we do not have the 15th. <laughs> but we that have... was in Abby's and my Donald and Hillary era. It oh. was, but we didn't have the of the election. We do have a span of the 6th <laughs> through the 13th. Okay. Okay. Do we need to proof this? All right, so this is a span of July 6th through the 13th of 2016. The editing of Bishop's book... Oh. Apostolic Pentecost. Oh my goodness. Oh. Comes out of nowhere. We were did not know about this. This was leading up to the Ruth Chris event. Yes. Yeah, that's we what had we got gift cards. cards for a year. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> we're frugal kind of. <laughs> we didn't know when we were going to go there. Uh, Kara is randomly summoned on a Wednesday night in the middle of a Trader Joe's. <laughs> True that. And they kickstarted a chaotic week. Uh, where the sisterhood was tossed into a hundred Guess plus who this is going long. back to? Carla! Carla! Call her right oh. now and tell. <gasps> Carla's the glue? Oh! oh. <laughs> the I appreciate the point. She's like, maybe the fifth one. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> uh, a hundred plus hour long editing process and all of its escapades. While myself, Kara, and Lydia are editing at the Wilson's home, Kara, or not Kara, Abby is babysitting whose daughter? Carla's! Carla's, Carla's daughter! <laughs> Oh Are you goodness. because all roads lead, lead back to, to Carla. Carla? That was eight years ago. You do not want me editing your book. <laughs> you also don't want me watching your children. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have to pick one or the other, watching your children is definitely a better option. Even though Carla was gone many an hour, yeah. Elaine and me, we, if we ours pulled it was through. Over a hundred hours, hers was like hundred and sixty hours. We the pulled it through, but she was tired of seeing me. It, I, yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You've been there too. <laughs> editing that book all hours of the night and I did not have my license because I was a late bloomer in the driving department as has been <laughs> established Carla drove me home at like 6 a.m after editing all night long because I left at like four or something yeah, like that I was like 16 years old yeah, yeah I was 16 I didn't have my birthday yet also side note the table we're sitting at right next right now is immediately next to a cabinet that I used to clean when I would clean Carla's house. Because and all we those used to live in House that we had macaroni and cheese in the first night was our my that's my really first home. Show. Yeah, that's hysterical. Wow. All right. I'm <laughs> also the fact that eight years ago people knew we were an entity. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She called us all together. Yes. Yeah. And, wow. and to still this day, does. To the same no limits. We get assigned our ministries together. I agree. What did you say? We're gonna start our own LLC. Oh yeah. yeah. All right. Shall we pick another date? <clears throat> all right, Kara, pick a date for us. Um. Let's do 
March 19th, 2017. March 19th, 2017, uh, Lydia's birthday. The Sisterhood goes to Chicago Fire, a place that we have frequented often, but now are... <laughs> No, okay. It's still delicious. It's, yeah, well, yeah. Anyways. The Rest sisterhood, when I go there sometimes. The Sisterhood goes to Chicago Fire after service. It must have been like a Sunday or Tuesday or something. Yeah. To celebrate Lydia's birthday. That's However. Sure. Wait, wait, is this when we were going to plan something? Oh, no. Never mind. However, on the 18th. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? We, we were at Chicago plan? Fire and we were going to plan some kind of vacation. Oh, boy. Oh, we've we planned so many vacations <laughs> and we've gone on like two. At Chicago Fire. Anyway, continue. continue. If Abby still trapped doesn't have it, then I ain't got a trap. <laughs> All right. On the 18th, we also celebrated your birthday. We went to do an escape room, and the oh. quotation is, they fail miserably. We did. It was miserable. It was awful. It was not a true escape room. It was not. No. We were supposed to be on a heist, and it, we weren't actually escaping, and we, we, we we're not good dollars. robbers. We, yeah. yeah. We're hey, upstanding that's citizens. A I think there was a little kid with us, too. Yeah, the It was like another son. family, yeah. 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 It was weird. All right, Abby, you want to pick a date? Okay. Um, let's try April 27th, 2019. All right, let's take a look at that date. April 27th, 2019. Abby's shoes turn her feet an exquisite shade of pink. Oh, oh I still have those. Yeah, you do. You do? I do. They're my, like, fake leather ones that are, like, the multicolor that I just wore on Tuesday night. Oh, yeah, you wear those all the time. They don't turn my shoes or my feet pink. You've anymore. had those Are your five feet years, just permanently pink? Though? Probably. My feet are permanently pink. Okay. The sisterhood realizes Adults. that an elder yeah. in the church exercises more than all of us combined. <laughs> she <probably still laughs> this is Still accurate. <laughs> this is <laughs> on, okay. um, <laughs> Oh my word, she definitely still exercises more than Abby <laughs> and Lydia go to, it just says Danielle's house. Were you at college? Uh, yeah, I was. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I was offended. So offended. <laughs> um, and here's the best part. They are up to some shady business. What we were doing, I have no idea. But the final thing says, Abby witnesses at Rev Dino's glass of milk before bed. <sighs> oh, yeah, he does believe in the glass he of milk. Let me tell you, the, the man milk. drank three glasses of chocolate milk this morning because he hasn't had any in the last 52 days. Yeah, he's like a kid. He drank home. three. So, Abby yeah. could never. Oh, were you there when we played? No, um, Abby could never. Heads up. Because there was a time we were playing heads up in your room, and it was like insane. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> when? At, at the Wharton House. Did we make our own deck? No. But I we think Kara was there. Unhinged. <laughs> I think Kara was there. Was it the same night that we were doing. What was it called? That was app? that the night the power went out? Oh, oh tell the story. Yeah. Tell the but, story. But there was also the era of that app. I can't remember what it was called. Where you just oh sing. oh it was it was um, oh dub 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 was it that we were some dub because we did the oh the minions the minions, yeah, the minions. Yeah. Yeah. but you were there for yeah. 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 it was like the same night it as might have the, been and Abby side note had a side shut hustle. up she had a she had, shut oh, up oh it was on a finsta shut this was a <laughs> I don't know. I was looking for it. The I minute. tried to. I, it's. I think Instagram probably has gone through and deleted their I've spam accounts. And I did try to hack into it the other day, <laughs> but I video. forgot my old password. <laughs> 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 All right, my turn to pick a date. I'm gonna pick April 30th, 2019. And I did not just randomly pick this one. I did scroll down a little bit and see it. To be fair. But it is hysterical because it says, Kara declares. I the, do be declaring. <laughs> that the sisterhood should go to Alaska. Facts. In summer oh. of 2020. Oh. 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 That did Hey, we went well. to Yellowstone. Yes, but we, we have never been to Alaska and it's been four no, years. I have not. Oh, we gotta go, you guys. We did go I to Yellowstone. I still wanna go. Let's go. Come on. Let's all quit our jobs. Okay. When are we going to get into <laughs> Um, uh, I'm actually free in the summer of 2024. I'll so. have you know, I've been trying to put together this trip in August. <laughs> Talk about not communicating. You know, Abby did not even reply to my text to be on this podcast. There because was a comma. I, was a comma. <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said, hey, are you free? Uh, comma. No. I said, comma. No. I said, are you free Thursday, comma, May 23rd? And she ghosted me. 
So I went and punched her in the face and then looked. Now she's here. <laughs> there was a comma, there was a date, and there was a question mark. That was and there was a ghosting. Three for three. Ghosting. <laughs> I ain't answering. <laughs> All right. We are going to close out this episode with probably, if not the biggest debate in sisterhood history. Oh my goodness. The I second have, biggest. I have no dog in this fight. I would say but probably the, the biggest. And let me tell you, I've got one phrase for you. The door was closed. <laughs> oh, ask Chloe. We should have had Chloe on the pod. I should have Chloe on the pod. I bet she's awake. Let's call her. Chloe. What? She wasn't she was in the other room. She doesn't know. Okay. So to recap, we're at the Wharton house. It's Kara's what, sixteenth? Yeah. Okay. Kara's 16th birthday, her best friend Chloe had flown out to be with it. After her party, we all go back to the house, and it had been a long day. <clears throat> Why are you looking at me like that? And I wanted to change. This is how I look at liars. <laughs> <laughs> everything I've said is true, and everything I am about to say is true. I go to my bedroom. But Sometimes liars story. believe their own lies. Th- to, mm. There's yes, more than that? you guys... For, like, multiple weeks had been yelling at us every time we knocked on the front door. Yep. The front door! <laughs> yes! The front! But that was The point, front! If you guys had just let us continue knocking like we like to do, the whole door. situation That is not what this fight avoided. is about. The fight yes, is not about the front door. Yes, but it started at the door. front door. No, it didn't! Yes, because if we had knocked at the front door <laughs> like we like to knock on doors... No. That would... No. You would have that changed We knock there. on closed doors. <laughs> no. No, you don't. Not we, and it shall be Let me, hold on. Let me finish <laughs> the Seek truth. Seek and you shall find. Let me finish the truth and then you can lie. If the music okay? can come. Amen. Okay, so I Hi. run upstairs to my bedroom, which is very far away from the rest of the house. <laughs> I close the door. Apparently it was not. <laughs> hold it in for a second. <laughs> Apparently it wasn't fully latched, but it was closed. Like there That's was no, there was no gap that you could like peek in. Okay, that I, is closed. It is closed. Yes, exactly. The door is closed. The door was closed. Correct. I thought you started this by saying the door was open. You just said the door was open. No, the door was closed. That's oh, yeah. she says the door is open. She says the door is <laughs> open. Oh. You know, I Thank you for agreeing with me. We have an answer. No, I didn't see the you door. You just said the door was closed one second ago. No. You were saying the door was closed. It I was is closed. It was closed. I thought you said it was open. No. Straight down for the record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was so good. Okay, so I'm not done. Sometimes calm down. Calm people, down. <laughs> sometimes when people lie, they just talk and talk and talk. You, <laughs> if I didn't keep getting interrupted, we wouldn't be having this problem. So I am changing my clothes. With the door shut. Kara and I have a shared bathroom. That door is also closed. Abby decides, hey, I'm going to go visit Danielle in her room (laughs) while I am changing. She did not know, to be fair, that I was changing. And you and Kara were talking. Because the bathroom door was open. Because you are allowed to talk to people while you're changing clothes when they're in another room. And the bathroom door was open. Anyways, Abby's crazy eyes are coming out. They are really, really crazy. So I am changing, and suddenly the door bursts open from its closed position. Like a and Abby goes, Rah! and then she goes, Aah! and her like raw turns into a scream of terror, and then she runs away. Because she opened a closed door <laughs> while I was changing, so this is her fault. The door was closed. All right, you liar. Go ahead. Get your eyes back down to where they need to be. We entered the Anderson home. What do you guys whisper up? We walked. <laughs> I don't know. I, I can't understand her lips. We walked. <laughs> Just share with the group, why I don't know. you? Oh. Share with the podcast. <laughs> we walked upstairs. <clears throat> I look straight ahead is Danielle's door, which, which is, is a jar. Not a jar. <laughs> <laughs> It's a door, not a jar. <laughs> Thank you. There is light coming out Stupid. from the bottom, and Chloe is sitting on Kara's bed. Chloe the is door my is good friend. Wide open. Shout out that. to Chloe. I don't. Know, I think we identified her. Yeah, we did. You said best friend from. You were Michigan. on your phone. Then, <laughs> Kara and Danielle had. I think they called a Jack and Jill door. Correct. Yeah. yeah. That Jack led in bathroom. Jack and what? Jack and Jill bathroom. Jack and Joe.
I just <laughs> took awful. a drink of my water. And Abby said, Jack and Joe serious? bathroom. And I accidentally spit my water out on her. Accidentally. It was accidentally. She I did not aim. <laughs> this is a new debate. And she Sorry, just yes, okay. said that <sighs> while I was taking a drink and putting my water back. And I happened to be facing in that direction. So that Happens. is not my fault. I am sorry. But why oh, are you, you recording? I am now. Oh, no one cares. I had to explain whispering. what just happened. I need a towel first. Yeah. <clears throat> it's like Fred the White. Okay, Jack and Joe, go ahead. <laughs> I was taking a drink when you said that. Sometimes <laughs> I misspeak and they correct me, and I thought Lydia was correcting me. I still need a drink too. <laughs> and I thought that Lydia was correcting me, and I thought she said Jack and Joe, and then Danielle. Deliberately, I was not deliberately. turned her head I was like, that and I was spat like, I was like, on me. Yeah. Put it get back here. You Did you see me? I put my water bottle. <laughs> Do you realize? Do you realize? Wait, 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 wait. Do you realize what has just happened? We're in the middle of a debate, and, I'm and we have time. another story now. <laughs> and you guys witnessed it pretty much. <laughs> and oh, I have true. been the victim of both. <laughs> Oh, I've heard that. So true, Abby. This let's is finish the first debate first. So it's truly a live show. Anyway, um, Chloe, who I wish was here right now, I, know. <laughs> I text her and asked if she's awake and she's ghosting. Kara me. was in the actual bathroom talking to Danielle. She was like undoing her hair or whatever. Danielle was talking back to Kara. I believe peeking through the door at Kara, right? Uh, I certainly was. No, the that. door the was. The door was closed. Okay. Oh, the bathroom door. I'm talking about. You were talking to that Kara. Was also, you think I'm gonna be? I don't know. Changing. I don't know. So anyway, I approach and you I know said, "At what state of my changing I was in? Why would I be doing that in front of her?" I didn't know you were changing. So I look at Chloe and I say, "Shh," <laughs> because the door is open door and is I closed. creepy, 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 creep, and go push. There was no twist of the handle. Facts. There was just a simple push <laughs> of the door. The door was and closed. I said, it was a <laughs> And then I said, <laughs> How would she know she could just push uh -huh. it if the door was, if she thought the door was closed? I said. And closed. now it I have been she spit on deliberately. Yeah. But it was not latched because the door, like this door in my room right now, it will close. But it won't last. Yeah, but then she would have turned the handle if she had thought it was closed. No. Abby, <laughs> I just need you to know that you just sounded like the chef in the get you. Holy <laughs> <laughs> this will either help you or I did in fact want to wrestle her after that. Because <laughs> she doesn't close the door when she's changing. Get you. <laughs> Once you were decent and in your right mind. <laughs> Rassle. You have never been in your right mind this entire friendship, so why oh, should I suddenly okay. be in mine? At least I don't spit on people. Yeah. <laughs> you have before. <laughs> okay, so to clarify what just now happened in the podcast that you witnessed, Abby said something while I was taking a drink and putting my water back at the same time. She is placed so that while I was turning, I was facing her. So she just got she showered. She turned to spit on me. And what I mean, she didn't like have some water in her mouth. She oh. had drank Niagara Falls yeah. and spit on me. Yeah, it was Chris Pine. My arm style. is wet. <laughs> so is my shirt. Facts, Garrett. Yeah. My shirt and my skirt. That was a lot of water. And I'm sorry, but it was not uh, intentional. Oh, I'm sorry, but. Danielle, have you ever had I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but. I'm sorry. Yeah, but. Are you a sorry, I'm but? sorry, and it wasn't intentional. <laughs> okay, another AEW reference. Excellent. Yet it. Okay. Yet it. Yet it. Wow, that was chaotic. But it is a very true representation of who we are as friends. And it's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Even though we just had that very unfortunate happening, um, I am very, very grateful to you guys for coming on to the pod, being my season one finale. Thank yeah! you. We got, we got one little... I wasn't sure if I should be quiet. I will clap for myself. <laughs> Anyways, I am so grateful <laughs> for my friends, and um, I couldn't have friend ever without the friendship that I have with them, because you can't teach people about whatever, any topic, without having some experience in any yourself, so the reason I feel comfortable teaching about friendship is because I have amazing friends, so thank you guys for being on the podcast. 
Uh, season two will be rolling out here in September. We should be your finale every season. Whoa. <laughs> Let the people vote, Carla. You should be on it with us. <laughs> and Chloe. And Chloe. Yeah. yeah. AJW. I agree. I agree. Season finale. As long finale. as you reply to my text when I ask you to be on it. Don't add any commas. <laughs> Um, be on the lookout for some special summer pop-ups here and there uh, on the podcast because we will try to sprinkle in some stuff because we don't just want to leave you hanging until September. But Kayla and I are so grateful that you have come with us this far. Don't forget to check out uh, our Instagram, Friendever, our YouTube channel, Friendever, and we'll be trying to drop out some more products on our website, so keep an eye on that. Thank you so much. Have an amazing summer, and we will see you in September. <laughs> And I know it was a low It was the Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of Friendever the Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And if you enjoyed today's content, leave a review and share with a friend. You can find the show notes on our website, www.friendever.net, and in the description of this episode. Friendship is a journey. It's an endeavor. We'll see you next time on Friendever.